Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and I am wearing today's project. It is this longer, super plush, fully lined, and zip up hoodie. This is a variation of a sweatshirt pattern that I have available on my site and in my shop. Depending on what size you need, there are different options. So I've linked a post that has all those pattern details that you can grab and then meet me back at the camera and I'll show you how I modified the basic pattern to get this variation. Let's talk about how to modify the pattern. First, you need to determine what length the zipper you are going to buy. So I've got a 30 inch zipper here and that's going to affect how much I add to my sweatshirt. You need to choose your sizing based on the bigger of your hip or your chest because if you're like triangle or pear shaped and your hips are bigger than your chest, then you're going to want to make sure since this is longer that it has enough room to go around your hips. Once you've determined that, you're going to need to add to the center front here for the zipper. You're gonna add a seam allowance and you need to add that same amount to the pocket of the pattern. Then keep in mind that the band that goes in the bottom is gonna be two and a half inches of finished length. So you can see on my zipper here, I've got a mark two and a half inches up and then what I needed to do was line that up with the seam allowance mark on my center front and I needed to mark half inch seam allowance mark on the neckline and I lined that up with the top edge of my zipper here so that it will zip all the way up. Once I line that up and measure it, then I determine that for my pattern for this 30 inch zipper, I needed to add six and a half inches. So I cut on the length and shorten line and I added six and a half inches to the length. Because I'm adding inches in the middle here, I also need to mark where the pocket was originally. So since the pocket originally gets lined up right here, then I want to keep the pocket in place, spread my six and a half inches, and I'm gonna make a mark on my pattern here that that's where my pocket bottom is going to get lined up. Because you don't want the pockets like 30 inches down where you're having to hunch over to put your hands or things in your pockets. However much you add to this front section, you need to add the same amount to the back section. And then we're ready to sew. Once you have your pattern modified, you want to cut out the hood, the sleeves, the front, the back, out of both fabrics. So if I have to cut two mirror image hood pieces, I'll do two mirror image out of the outside fabric and two mirror image out of the inside fabric. Same thing for the sleeves, the front, the back. The pockets, you only need to cut out for the outside fabric, and then you only need the cuffs and the hem band of the outside fabric as well. So, what I did here is I've basically constructed the outside jacket. And I have another video here showing how you can sew this together step by step. I'm not gonna go through all the steps on this video. I just wanna go through the things that are different for creating a lined jacket. So I've sewn the hood, I've sewn the sleeves, I've done the pockets, and let's talk a little more about the pockets. So there was that mark that I made on center front showing where I wanted the bottom of my pocket to go. I had to fold the seam allowance on the pocket under and top stitch in place to keep the pocket in place on those sides there. Because in the normal construction, when you don't lengthen this, this gets caught in that hemband seam. Since it will not be in that seam, I did have to stitch across the bottom of the pocket. The next thing I wanna do here with this outer shell is I want to add the zipper. And I'm going to do this one side at a time and baste it in place. So again, I've got my mark where the seam allowance for the zipper goes. And I want to move up the seam allowance amount, which is half an inch, on my fabric. And I wanna match those two things together. So I'm going to go ahead, pin my zipper right sides together with my fabric and I'm gonna take it all the way up. And then I wanna baste one side of the zipper in place. 
And I can go ahead and since this is a separating zipper, we can work with just one side of the zipper. Now I'm going to use a basting stitch and a zipper foot to baste this side of the zipper in place. Once I've got that side of the zipper sewn in, I want to reattach the two ends of the zipper. And I'm gonna make some marks on the other side, the back side of the zipper. I want to mark where the bottom of the pocket ends up. I wanna mark where the top of the pocket ends up. And I wanna mark where the bottom of the fabric ends up. And those are gonna help me line this up on the other side of my jacket. So now I can fold my jacket right sides together. I'll tuck all those sleeves inside. And here's the other side of my zipper that I need to sew. So I know this mark is gonna be on top and I'm pinning parallel right now just so I can get a couple of spots in place. And then I can undo the zipper again so that I am just working with the one side. Once I have both sides of the zipper basted in, I can put the zipper back together and just double check that my pockets are lined up where they need to be and that it lines up at the seam up at the top. If it doesn't, then you can take the basting stitches out and you can wiggle and adjust as needed. Once you have that done, we're actually going to seam rip like the last inch of where this is attached to the fabric just to get it kind of out of the way. Okay, so I just want a little bit of my fabric loose at the bottom here because we're going to attach the hem band next. So what I want to do is fold my jacket so that I can mark the center back here and I want to match the center back with the center fold of my hem band. We're not gonna be sewing the hem band into a loop because it needs to unzip in the front. So I'll match that center back and then I will match each end with the zipper kind of out of the way. And then I will stretch as I sew, I will stretch the hem band so that it matches and lays flat against the jacket. So I'm gonna stitch the one side of the hem band right sides together with my jacket all the way across. Once you have that hem band sewn across the bottom, you do want to double check that your seam line matches with those marks that you had made on the zipper of the two and a half inches up from the finished waistband. Meanwhile, I also have constructed the lining. So I've got it wrong side out and that's how I'm going to leave it for now. But I've gone ahead and I've done the sleeve seams, the side seams, the hood. There's just one difference that you need to keep in mind when you're stitching this. On one side seam, you need to leave a gap and it needs to be five to six inches because you're gonna end up turning the entire jacket right side out through this gap in the lining. So make sure that you do leave that on one side. Then what we wanna do is we want to take the waistband, we wanna put it right sides together with the lining fabric. And we wanna match up the bottom edge of the lining fabric now with the waistband. So here is my center point of my lining. I'm gonna match that to the center point of the hem band. And then just like I did with the outer fabric, I wanna stretch the waistband flat to match the lining. Okay, here is my lining. I've connected it to the hem band, and then here's my outer fabric. And now what we're going to do, I'm actually gonna pull these sleeves right, right sides out too. We're going to make basically a big bag. We're gonna fold this whole thing in half. We're gonna match up the hoods right sides together and match up those seams. We're gonna go all the way down the front and we're gonna sandwich the zipper in between the lining and the outer fabric. And then down here at the bottom, 
When we fold this in half and we fold the hem band so that those seam allowances match, that should also, if we measured correctly and did this all right, should match perfectly the bottom edge of the zipper. Because I am using this fuzzy Sherpa teddy bear fleece as my lining, I don't want to stitch as close to the zipper teeth as I normally would with a zipper. And that's just because I want to make sure that there's enough room away from the zipper teeth so that they can open and close without getting stuck in that fuzzy lining. And you'll notice I'm using clips to match this up. Um, when I am working with these thick fuzzy fabrics like this, I prefer to use clips. And in fact, I've got a whole other post and I've got that linked and it's full of tips and tricks to work with these fuzzy fabrics. I like to move the zipper head so that it's not right in that hem man when I'm stitching that area. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch all the way around these edges. When I am above the zipper, so on the hood area, I'll be using a stretch stitch since this is stretch fabric. On the zipper area, I will be using a straight stitch because the zipper doesn't stretch, so a straight stitch is more appropriate there. Once you've stitched all the way around the edges of the zipper and the hood, then it is time to find your gap in the lining and pull the whole thing right side out. Make sure you get down into the corners to pop out that zipper and you're gonna take the sleeves from the lining and you're going to either shove or pull them into the sleeves of the outer fabric. Same thing with the hood, take the lining fabric of the hood and push it into the outer fabric. Once you've got that all turned right side out, you can go ahead and connect your zipper and double check that everything lines up nicely. And then the last thing we need to do to finish this is to add the cuffs. I'm gonna go ahead and fold my cuffs wrong sides together and I'm gonna match that up with the seams here. And this is kind of thick because I'm sewing through four layers of fabric, but so I've got the seam of the cuff matched up with the seam of my outer fabric, matched up with the seam of my lining, and I kind of just fold all of the seam allowances like opposite directions from each other so that they balance out. Then I'm gonna put this on my serger and I'm gonna stretch the cuff until everything is flat and stitch around that way. So as you can see, once you sew these cuffs on, then you're basically finished. The only thing left to do is to sew up the gap in your lining. And to do that, you're going to use a blind stitch. And I've linked a video that has how to do that. And you'll be able to see much more clearly in that video what you need to do than if I tried to show you on this fuzzy fabric where the stitching will get lost. So once you do that, then you will have a finished hood. And if you check out this playlist, you can see a lot more variations on this pattern and different ways that you can make it.